This is my mask, by the way. Ta-da! I haven't just started wearing cravats for no reason. That'd be weird. You'll have to forgive me, the washing machine's just come on. Ah, what up folks, Alex here. I've got a new lens. This is a Yongyi Mitokon 17mm f 0.95. 0.95, so it's a super fast manual lens for the Micro Four Thirds system, which of course my Lumix G9 is just that. So I decided to pick it up because it looked cool and it's fully manual and I fancied having to play with a fully manual lens because I haven't had one in ages. Now this isn't a sponsored video, first of all, I bought this because I saw it, thought it looked cool and it's also, this isn't a review, I've only had it for a few days, I just wanted to get out and film with it. I've got a variable ND filter on there because I'm going to need that to keep this at 0.95. I'm going to try and film most of this video wide open because you buy a 0.95 lens to use it at 0.95. So we're gonna try and shoot wide open for most of this video so you guys can see how it all looks. Ah. All right, I think I'm roughly in focus. Ish, if I stay right here. This was just over 300 pounds, 320 pounds I paid for it, which is a bit of a steal for a 0.95 lens. Now, saying that, I looked on Amazon yesterday and it's gone up to like 480 quid or 400 and something quid but i think that's because it's the last one i think they're just taking a risk and going bump the price up we've only got one left in stock i'd imagine when they get more in the price should come back down bit of a steal for such a fast lens obviously manual focusing especially when you're trying to manual focus on yourself is a little bit difficult at 0.95 but it's a bit of fun it's a bit of a challenge so we're just going to see how it goes All right, see you in a bit. Ah. Oh, bit dark. Right, we're done. Done at the gym. Gonna stroll into town, get some lunch. Shooting the 2.8 at the minute. See how this goes. Right, now obviously it's not a vlogging lens, but if you stop it down a bit, you sort of can vlog on it. It's a bit long, being 35, but it sort of works. I'm at 2.8 and it just helps with the focus because obviously you're manually focusing. I can sort of adjust my focus with my hand as we go, but not very well. Right, now if you stop it down, so I'm shooting at f4 now, it's actually not that bad to film yourself on. You have to set your focus beforehand, obviously, but kind of works. 17 mil at something like f4, f5.6 on micro four thirds. Plenty of depth of field, it's quite easy to actually set and forget. I'm shooting at 4K 50 frames per second for most of this with a bit of obviously 4K 25. Generally sticking to 4K 50, because then I can keep my one one hundredth of a second shutter speed there's loads and loads of light, trying to shoot at 0.95 at 1 50th of a second, the ND is sort of maxing out and we get a bit of vignetting and whatever else, so 4K50 seems to work better. There you go, I just slap it on a 25 frames per second timeline. Job done, it'll still look pretty good.
So what's it like to focus? Well, it's actually pretty easy, especially on the G9. Modern cameras, especially mirrorless these days, they're just a dodder anyway. Because you've got the focus peaking, you've got the magnification, it's not that hard to focus, even at 0.95. Obviously, I'm not really tracking much. I'm just doing some focus pulls, making sure things are relatively sharp and it's relatively easy. If you're trying to follow some fast action, obviously it's gonna be a little bit more difficult, but it's honestly not too bad. The fact that it's a proper manual focus ring just makes life so much easier. It's really heavily damped, so you've got stops at either end, so you know when you're at infinite or when you're at the, the macro side of things. It's just a doddle, honestly. I'm saying that. I'm hoping that most of this vlog is actually in focus. If it's all out of focus, then it's really hard to focus. <laughs> <laughs> but no, the G9, honestly, the focus peaking on the G9 is wicked. And that monitor is way brighter than I thought it was, honestly. Never really thought too much about it. But I'm out here, it's bright sunlight, and I can see the focus peaking, which is really cool. So I can make sure that things are in focus just by checking the peaking. I can check the magnification if I want to. I've got it mapped to one of my custom buttons. So I just hit a button, I can double check it, hit that, start recording, and job done. So yeah, not that bad. Loads of fun though, that's more the more important thing just fun manual focus is fun if you've never tried it if you've never played with a manual focus lens pick one up if you're shooting sony you can get adapters for old canon fd lenses and they're dirt cheap little adapters and they work really well when i first moved to sony i picked up a sony a7 i couldn't afford any of the sony lenses so i bought a load of old canon fd manual focus lenses i had a 28 mil a 135 mil and a 50 mil and they were great. Again, turn the focus peaking on, and off you go. Loads of fun. Ah, I still fit on playgrounds. So, there's something else really cool about shooting with a manual lens, and by manual I mean manual aperture. So, you control the aperture entirely from the lens itself. So, you've got an aperture ring, you move that to go from f9.5 to f1.4 to 2.8 to 5.6, whatever. You can just control it using that ring, which is cool for a couple of reasons. So, number one, it means that basically you control your exposure entirely using the lens. You very rarely need to touch the camera itself other than the record button. So you set your ISO in camera, you set your shutter speed in camera, and then that's it, you leave it. So when I'm out shooting, I can control my depth of field with my aperture ring. If I knock my aperture down to something like f2.8, I then adjust the exposure using my variable ND. So I just rotate them to compensate for each other, which is cool. So you never have to touch a button on your camera. You just look at the screen to make sure you're in focus. You look at the screen to make sure exposure is good. If you want to adjust your exposure, you can either use the aperture ring if you want to change your aperture, or if you want to stick wide open, at, let's say 0.95, then you just change your variable ND filter until the image on screen looks about right. And that's a really cool way to work. You just never have to touch any buttons. You do it all on the lens and that's kind of fun. And then the other cool thing with that is for me at least, when you're moving something physical and you can see something happening when you move it and you see the depth of field changing on screen, you see the image getting darker, it just causes that link, it causes that cognitive link in your brain so you've got a better understanding of what's going on. I find with digital cameras and stuff these days, when you just move a dial and numbers change, you're like, oh, what's that doing? But when you've got a physical ring and you can see it opening up, closing, etc. For me, it just instills it in my brain and I go, oh, I know what's going on now. So they're fun, but they're also a good learning tool. You learn a lot while you're playing with them. So there you go. That's what I think. Anyway, you might think that's a load of rubbish. Might be. This is my mask, by the way. Ta-da! I haven't just started wearing cravats for no reason. That'd be weird. So this is one of the weird characteristics of this lens. This is not the ND filter, trust me, that flare. So, let me knock it down a bit. So see that flare? I'm shooting at 0.95. If I twist my aperture just a smidge, it goes away. And I'm back in, and it goes away. You only get that real big obvious circular flare right in the middle at 0.95. It also changes the hue. We go from a slightly pinkish hue wide open to a slightly green hue 
just when you step down the aperture a tiny bit. It's slightly odd, but I don't hate it. That's me, I'm done. Anyway, I'm back home. Oh, it's really hot. It's really hot for UK weather. It's like 25 degrees or something, which for us Brits is the equivalent to like 50 degrees everywhere else. We don't deal with the heat generally. So <laughs> I'm gonna chill out. Dogs have just had some fun with the house pipe, so they were all cooled down. Yeah, this lens is really fun. I've really enjoyed playing with it today. I've taken it out the other day and had a play with it. Had loads of fun then, so I'm really looking forward to just doing more with it, having some fun with it. I really like the way it renders stuff. It's not perfect, it's actually full of imperfections and that's kind of what I like. But it's really fun to use. I'm gonna keep using it and hopefully, I keep doing more of these vlogs because it's fun. I like doing them. There are some links if you wanna check out the gear that I use to make these vlogs. It's all down in the description below, but whatever. So thanks for watching, take it easy. I'll catch you next time. Arr. Arr.